Hey, what's up, Shinobans, and welcome back to my channel. So it's another week, and we're going to talk about pH and soil. So over here, you can actually see that we have Luva Biostratum. So it's uh, buffering around 5.8 to 6.3. So mostly on, uh, on the higher side, between 6 to 6.3. So that's uh, from Fluva. And we also have like ADA uh, version 1. So those are actually buffering around 5.5 to 5.8. So why do we actually use both? I think uh, there are a few things that we have to think about, especially for the Caridina stream uh, industry, is that there are a lot of types of soil in the, in the market. And what is actually important to note here is that while we understand that different soil provides different buffering, we also need to know that when do we actually use which type of soil for which type of streams. So in a very large scale, uh, high level uh, you know, usage, I would always use ADA version 1 or the ones that is able to lower the, the pH for crystal streams. So for example, crystal streams uh, do significantly better uh, after you know we have more than 100 tanks over here. Um, crystal streams like centers and uh, PRL, you know PRL over here, they generally do much better in low pH, slightly low pH I would say compared to uh, Fluva and what type of streams do better in Fluva or higher pH maybe between um, 5.8 to 6.3 in general I would say that those streams like um, tigers, anything that with a tiger like for example over here we have the uh, uh, it's a bit dark, okay I'm just going to brighten it it's uh, the OE blue boats type, uh, those are the ones that generally prefer a much slightly higher pH compared to the uh, black majors. So on top of that, we also need to understand that the buffering capacity of Fluva versus the ADA as well. Because we have a lot of type of soil uh, that's available in the, in the market. You have environmental soil, you have control soil, you have a lot of type of different, different type of soil that you can actually purchase. So, but to really understand what they can actually do makes a big difference. So I'll just quickly show you guys. Oh, we have a lot of uh, Opeola here. So we're gonna do an Opeola uh, video in future. But you can see there are more than 300, 400, I think maybe even 500 streams that is in this tank. Absolutely stunning. So coming back to that pH thing, you know, um, recently we tested quite a lot of tanks and over a few years, we actually tested one of the tanks uh, at my place that is already four years old and is using the ADA version one and it's still buffering at 5.8. So when we think about the ability to actually have the buffering capacity, you no, know, four years is a long time. Uh, we do a lot of water changes, so weekly water changes. And after four years, even let's say we do you no know, two water changes in a month. There's also quite a significant number of uh, water changes over the last four years. The ability to control and able to handle the uh, pH buffering, it is important to note that then, do we then need to reset our tanks? So that comes to another side of the story. That is the reason why, you know, when we started off with this uh, journey on using the reset baskets and having the flexibility to um, keep streams on any of any type of gravel colors that you actually want um, that give us a, a little bit of an idea you know oh, we have a sweet potato over there but to come back on here um, to talk about the buffering capacity the buffering ability and do we really need you know to reset our tank so this give another thought process on when do we actually need to do a reset? So in the past, what we do is that eight months, good colony that is bred out, we will do a reset, right? So that's how we actually wanted to, to do that. But can we then introduce or maintain the, the quality of the uh, breeding cycle by other means so that we don't have to reset, but yet still be able to generate the, the, the type of the quality of the resets uh, in terms of the breeding methodology. 
Like for example, if every time when we do a reset, the, the tank breeds, how can we actually mimic that from a pH perspective? Because whenever there's new soil in there, new colony in there, the streams will breed. But is that the main factor? Is it pH that is affecting the, the streams breeding cycle or is it other things? So when we think about the cycling process, remember the cycling process during that 30, 40 days is where a lot of this you know, biofilm is growing in the tank, a lot of this microorganism is growing in the tank and you know like copy pots they do breed in 30 to 60 days so they have that cycle as well and generally i would say that you know um, that will actually also help in terms of the breeding cycle because the streams have a lot of food first they have a lot of food they have a lot of biofilm they have a lot of uh, microorganisms in the tank the tank is rich in that sense but how are we going to mimic that and how do we actually create that uh, from time to time so from here what i'm actually thinking is that moving forward other than you know uh, moving some of these uh, like copy pots like in one of the videos we talk about copy pots and microorganisms you are actually able to move them whenever there's a buffering whenever the soil is still buffering then we will have to think do we really need to do a reset from a ph perspective other than that, I would also think that, you know, um, the entire ecosystem is very beneficial for the streams to breed. So to create that and to maintain that will actually help a lot. So in other words, when we think about resets, do we want to do a reset because of the sake of resetting? I think the whole idea here is that the, we want to do a reset because the tank is not, I mean, the soil is not able to buffer or the tank is not in a, in a great shape. If the tank can continue to continue to breed and breed and breed, which some of my tanks do, then why is, then we have to question why do we need to reset, right? We want to do a reset because we want to probably introduce new streams or we want to do something else with the tank, then we do a reset. So long story short on this topic on the pH is that while we understand the usage and uh, the parameters like uh, Fluva is between 6 to 6.3, uh, ADA is between 5.5 .5 to 5.8, I mean your numbers may vary. Um, what do we want to go about doing this in the future? I think there is no one right way of seeing this. Um, I think at the end of the day, we really want to talk about and think about what actually makes a big difference. A big difference meaning that what can we do to actually help more hobbies to be in this, uh, I mean, to help more hobbies achieve what they want in, in future. And how do we actually do, go about doing that is that, you know, the resetting part is uh, a bit tedious. So we have changed from moving, you know, uh, vacuuming up the, the gravel to changing using the baskets but then again if we are we are able to actually improve one more step where we are actually able to mimic and contain the or keep building up the ecosystem then the tank will always be in optimum condition till a time that the optimum condition is being released or you know uh, it's not able to then sustain that optimum condition so from, from that perspective, I would, I would really, really encourage you know, um, people in the hobby to really think about what we have been taught, what, ha what we have been you know, educated, what we have been passed down from, from other breeders, knowing that you know, these are all passed down information. This passed down information, while good, is based on exper experience. And now that we have learned how to keep them, breed them, what are some of the new ways and ways to actually help and introduce the hobby to more people and let them know that you know, stream keeping is not that difficult and it is also fairly simple to actually keep them and breed them. So I will encourage readers to think about all these uh, aspects of uh, stream breeding and if you have any good ideas, you can actually share your comments uh, in the comment section below 
so that we can all think about what is actually possible in the long run. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this and please remember to subscribe and until next time, peace out.